all right youtube this is detroit's hp tv coming to you out of detroit back with another video we're going to address the elephant in the room because it seems like a lot of people won't get down to the basics of what's happening in this country i titled this video that it's impossible for you to be a democrat and a christian at the same time you cannot be a christian and a democrat the democratic party bases its policies on things like abortion which is prohibited by the bible and quran so you can't be a muslim either it wants to change the gender of your children on a school level everything that the bible or god says don't do the Democrats tell you that you can do. Now think about it. In the Bible or in theology, it tells you that the devil deceived the people by saying that he was offering them something that God had prohibited. You know, so in this Christian nation, it's forbidden to destroy the fruit of your womb. It's forbidden for men to lay with other men as they would a woman everything the old testament and the new testament says is forbidden the democratic party has said is permissible and on a whole nother level the democrats have gotten to the point to where they use threats and intimidation and fear mongering and scare tactics to achieve their agendas in this country. And a lot of conservatives, they stand down. They don't meet them head on because they know that the Democratic administration has turned the judicial system into a weapon that they use against their political opponents and the citizens that they feel don't agree. They like to tell you that there was an insurrection in Washington DC there was never an insurrection look up the definition of insurrection look it up and see if you've ever seen in this day and time an insurrection but my point is the level of disrespect coming from the left as it relates to people who want to choose their own candidate have their own philosophy on how to live their lives is a problem to them. You know, when you look into the Biden administration and the things they do, even if you look at Joe Biden's son, Hunter, you know, if you look at the fact they found cocaine in the White House, look at the fact that they put all these tethers from other countries in political positions who are opposed to the American populace, you can see that they're orchestrating the downfall of this country. You know, the devil deceived the whole world as they say in Revelations. So you have these people, they come out and they act like they're really for the people, but they're not for the people, they're for power, they're for money, Therefore, the trafficking. Therefore, all the evil and wickedness that you see in this country. America is closer to Sodom and Gomorrah than it is to a, to a Christian nation. You know, you see the Democratic Party has infiltrated the church. Most of their Low, latest uh, political tricks have been done in churches because they seek to defile the house of God. They think to mislead God's people. And you stand back and because of your own shortcomings, you're afraid to tell the truth. I don't think that I've lived anywhere near a perfect life. I've made so many mistakes <clears throat> that I'm only alive by the mercy and grace of God. 
And I know I'm unworthy. So you can't come at me with nothing. I am unworthy of the mercy of the Most High. And I exist and function only by grace. I'm not justified in even walking this planet because of the transgressions that I've taken in my life, in my younger years. As a uh, imperfect person, imperfect man. But one thing about me is I always knew when I was doing wrong. And I always had remorse for certain things that I did. But the Democratic Party has proven to be <coughs> a totally wicked and evil administration. And their tactics of bullying conservatives is unacceptable. Patriots out there, look how they talk about the people who disagree with their policies. You have to be stupid, fanatical, dumb, brainwashed. They come at you with everything. And most of the conservatives, they stand down because they see that they're using a judicial system against Trump and against any of their opponents. They have the full control of Hollywood and the entertainment industry. You know what I mean? Most of them people on the list that Epstein had are Democrats. Epstein's Island was a Democratic playhouse. So let's keep it real, people. Let's keep it real. We know that the Democratic Party is 100% wicked and evil. And they choose to make this country unacceptable to God. I'm going to show you a clip. <clears throat> I think I showed you this clip before. I want you to see Joy Reid again. They put Joy Reid out there on MSNBC because she got a black face. You know what I mean? So whenever they want to communicate some debauchery or foulness that goes against the aspiration of black people, they pick a black face. But look at her wickedness as she goes at this pastor. Look at what they do. Look at how they're talking to the country with their bullying and their threats. Patriots. People of God. Be honest. Can you be a Democrat and a Christian or a Muslim when both ideologies and philosophies are diametrically opposed to each other? So this is Saturday. So, you know, tomorrow, Sunday, you go to church. You sit there and you listen to your pastor, how he don't speak against abortion, how he don't speak against evil because he wants to protect that 501c3 while he leads you to hell. Do you really think that your prayers are being heard when you practice evil and wickedness in the name of democracy? It's blasphemous and it's mocking God. So let's get into the clips. This is for fair usage under 1976 Copyright Act. It's for commentary and educational purposes. But I want you to listen how Joy Reid goes at this pastor one more time in the reasons she's attacking him so venomously. LGBTQ hating, gun loving, anti abortion, extreme. This lady is evil. Listen to her. Republicans in North Carolina have nominated a Holocaust denying, LGBTQ hating, gun loving, anti abortion, extremist, Christian nationalist zealot, who also happens to be a black man who hates the civil rights movement as their nominee for governor. And while usually we try to not make you listen to too much loopy talk on this show, I think you need to hear him for yourself. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mark Robinson, the state's current lieutenant governor. For me, there is no compromise on abortion. It makes no difference to me why or how that child ended up in that womb. There's no reason anybody anywhere in America should be 
telling any time about transgenderism, homosexuality, any of that filth. And yes, I call it filth. We are called, you know, getting ready to get in trouble, called to be led by men. The Christian patriots of this nation will own this nation and rule this nation. I got them AR-15s in case the government gets too big for its britches. Because I'm going to fill the backside of them britches with some lead. Now it is worth noting that he was bragging about his AR-15 the day after white, a white supremacist murdered 10 black people at a supermarket in Buffalo, New York. Which it turns out is completely in character for Robinson, who rose to right wing fame as a passionate defender of guns, guns, and more guns. So much so that he mocked the survivors of the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, calling them spoiled, angry, know it all children trying to tell law abiding adults that we must give up our constitutional right to own certain weapons. Adding that these silly little immature media prostitutes need to have a seat in time out and shut up. That is the Mark Robinson who was elected lieutenant governor in 2020 and who Donald Trump endorsed last weekend saying this. This is. Martin Luther King on steroids, okay? Now, I told that, I told that, I told that to Mark. I said, I think you're better than Martin Luther King. I think you are Martin Luther King times two. Uh, the Martin, the Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was assassinated using a certain weapon, a high-powered shotgun, because he was leading the civil rights movement that ensured that Mark Robinson could vote in the South and eat in restaurants without the humiliation of segregation, and that he can stand for election to potentially become the state's first black governor. You know, the civil rights movement that Mark Robinson once referred to on Facebook as, quote, that crap in the 1960s that was the communist rise movement. Facebook is also where Robinson shared his rampant and gross anti-Semitism freely. In 2018, he wrote, quote, this foolishness about Hitler disarming millions of Jews and then marching them off to concentration camps is a bunch of hogwash. In 2017, he claimed, quote, there is a reason the liberal media fills the airwaves with programs about the Nazi and the six million Jews, and he put that in quotes, that they murdered. Robinson also wrote about how an agnostic Jew made the film Black Panther to, quote, pull the shekels off of your Schwarza pockets. And while he was running for lieutenant governor, I'm going to interject one more time. She is a paid fibber. She tells fibs. And they just use her because she's a black woman. And for some reason in media and in this country, they think you can't criticize a black woman, but you can because we understand that they're being used by the Democratic Party as a tool to espouse their ideas. Hear me again. They use them so that they can claim that you're, in a, you're attacking a woman or you're attacking a black woman. It's a, it's a race baiting tactic that is concocted in secrecy when they have their meetings. They pick these people. Joy Reid is not an attractive person. She's a second generation American. But she has the complexion that they need to espouse their ideology without being accused of being racist. But anybody who attacks her point of view is a racist. These are tricks. This is trick knowledge. This is the devil's trick knowledge, where the devil makes evil seems good and good seems bad. This party has become a hundred percent wicked. Let's just keep it a buck. The whole problem with them not getting along with the Middle East because they want to import their illicit behavior to other countries. They want to corrupt other countries. It's almost as if the Democratic Party 
is being used as a tool of some type of wicked, nefarious, hidden cabal. And they come out in front of the people and they exploit your hypocrisy. You know how many people are going to church tomorrow to atone or whatever, only to go back and do the same things Monday through Friday again? The government knows that. So they make it legal. So you can compare what's legal with what's right. Well, I can do it because it's legal. Forget the fact that's not right, is wrong, and it's forbidden in Holy Scriptures. This is a trick that they plan on the masses. Conservatives, you need to stop standing down on them because they're bullying you. They attempted to bully Trump. So because they can't bully Trump, everything he say is off the rails. You know what I mean? Or there is some type of mental uh, deficiency in the people that support Trump. It's a tool that they use to play on your psyche and to make you think that American law trumps universal law, scripture, and overall righteous conduct. I'm gonna let you just do some more. In 2020, Robinson voiced agreement with a religious leader who claimed that the four horsemen of the apocalypse are the Rothschild family of international bankers that rule every single central bank, the CIA, China, and Islam. And somehow a majority of North Carolina voters elected that man lieutenant governor. Maybe they didn't know all of that. But it is that Mark Robinson who North Carolina Republican primary voters have chosen as their candidate for governor. Democrats, meanwhile, nominated North Carolina's current attorney general, Josh Stein, who, if elected, would become the state's first Jewish governor. The irony is kind of poetic. Josh Stein, North Carolina attorney general and Democratic nominee for governor, joins me now. I guess the... Now she pulls up the Democrat <clears throat> and she tries to use his ethnicity. Do you think it's by accident that she called him an anti semite anti-Semite and anti-Semitic then show other statements and then she brings on he's going to be the first Jewish governor. Does that mean that he's going to be a righteous governor? Does that mean he's going to uphold Judeo-Christian ethic? Does that mean anything other than the fact that you can't speak against them or you're going to be considered an anti-Semite? all these evil and disingenuous tools that they use you see through them clearly they try to censor you if you speak on it and they bully you and accuse you of all type of crimes if if you stand against it time out for that you cannot have two masters you're going to hate one or love the other so you can't serve God and mammon let's look at something else turn words into images with AI this afternoon to begin this we will begin here President Biden answered a big question now they have this lady, Ilyan Omar, a, a Somalian. And uh, her loyalty and her ties are to Somalia, not America. But she's a member of the squad with Corey Bush, Rashida Tlaib. Rashida Tlaib doesn't represent Detroit. Tlaib, Tlaib, I mean, Rashida Tlaib represents Muslims. 
and she's a Muslim, so she has the right to represent her people, but she can't do it. and say that she represents the American people. Those things are opposed. You know, they say we the people, in order to establish a more perfect union, establish justice in these different things in, these, in this country. So, to see the Democratic Party clearly all you have to do is look past your very own personal hypocrisy and detach from them. You know we all fall short. We all make mistakes. But in our mistakes, we don't make it policy. If you drink alcohol, you don't make it policy that everybody should drink. If you abuse drugs, you don't want it to be policy that everybody does it because you already know that you're damaging yourself and you're damaging your spirit. These people have become, like I said, a hundred percent wicked. Now let's look at this with the squad. How they say this story is Biden anger squad member. No human being is illegal. We will begin here. President Biden answered a big question last night in his state of the union address. Does he want to unite America as he promised he would as a candidate last go round? The answer was a resounding no. Some are calling the speech a campaign rally, a political theater. It was attack after attack on the Republican Party and pure hate for Donald Trump. At least he finally tried to say Lake and Riley's name after some heckling to get him to say it. I'm Harris Faulkner. You are in the Faulkner Focus. The speech was one hour, seven minutes. Biden laid into former President Trump from start to finish 13 times. Never said his name, though. The president, my predecessor, failed the most basic presidential duty that he owes to American people, the duty to care. I think that's unforgivable. My predecessor, a former Republican president, tells Putin, quote, do whatever the hell you want. That's a quote. My team began serious negotiation with a bipartisan group of senators. The result was a bipartisan bill with the toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, you don't like that bill, huh? And if my predecessor is watching, instead of paying politics and pressuring members of Congress to block the bill, join me. Telling the Congress to pass it. My predecessor, my predecessor, my predecessor. My lifetime has taught me to embrace freedom and democracy. The other people my age see it differently. The American story of resentment, revenge, and retribution. That's not me. Criticism is continuing to pour in. His predecessor, as he called former President Trump, said that may be the angriest, least compassionate, and worst State of the Union speech ever made. It was an embarrassment to our country. And here's Alabama Senator Katie Britt in the official Republican rebuttal. What we saw was the performance of a permanent politician. President Biden's border policies are a disgrace this crisis is despicable. People are scraping by while President Biden proudly proclaims that Bidenomics is working. Goodness, y'all. Bless his heart. We know better. I actually checked on YouTube a little while ago. This has picked up so much traffic. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and his own State of the Union speech. A growing number of Americans are rejecting divisiveness. They're ready to unite to rebuild this country and to fulfill the promise of the America of my youth. They're ready to vote for something and for someone they like, for someone who represents hope and healing. Well, that was from his campaign ad. We'll have a little bit of his speech coming up. Republican Senator Ron Johnson was where it happened last night. He's on deck. First to Lucas Tomlinson at the White House. Lucas. 
Harris, the speech lasted just over an hour, and there were several interruptions, including from Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who demanded the president say the name of that young woman killed in her home state by an illegal immigrant. It's not about him. It's not about me. I'd be a winner. Not. I. Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. President Biden might have been thinking about football. Of course, Lincoln Riley's the head coach of the USC Trojans. Now some pushback from a progressive member of the squad, Ilhan Omar, posting on X, let me be clear, no human being is illegal. That word didn't seem to bother former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who gave Biden a sitting ovation. We usually say on document, uh-huh. he said illegal. I don't think it's a big deal. Okay. I don't think it's a big deal. But, but more broadly, because I think the his focus, I'm going to end on that note. Ilyan Omar, a Somalian national who still represents Somalia in, in, in the Congress in the United States, said no one can be considered an illegal. How is that possible when you illegally cross the border? So you are saying that no nation should have boundaries. The people that follow God didn't mix mix with the Philistines, did they? See, at some point, you just got to be honest and say, the Democratic Party is a demon crossy. It is demonic rule. It is anti-God and anti-country. And I know some of you are going to, Oh, I'm going to unsubscribe. I don't care. Move around. But you're not going to sit up and say that you represent God and country when everything you do goes against God and country. I'm going to end on that note. Signing to you out of Detroit. Peace. Keep your head on swivel. Salute to all patriots. Peace.